huge corridor, hundreds of miles long, probably have supercells all the way from Texas up to the Dakotas or Minnesota. Supercells, instability, wind shear, and cap. This is the vocabulary of a seasoned storm chaser and the main ingredients for a possible tornado. This year's tornado season has been the deadliest since 1953, with nearly 1,000 tornadoes reported so far, double the amount in a typical year. In order to learn more about these powerful vortexes, WHJ spoke to one climate scientist whose hobby is to chase and document them as part of his annual family vacation. Yeah, at least half the days of the springtime, somewhere around the Midwest, there's going to be a tornado somewhere. And if your storm chase strategy is working, you get yourself to the right place and you may be able to witness it. So this is the area of rotation here. Simon says most tornadoes form from a special class of thunderstorms called supercells. These explosively developing thunderstorms are rare, but when they strike, they can be devastating. A distinct feature that separates a supercell from an average storm is the rotation of the rising column of air that forms it, called the updraft. This rotating updraft is a key factor in the development of a supercell that can eventually spawn a tornado. The supercell is the thunderstorm with the greatest likelihood of producing tornadoes, um, by far. So what we're trying to do when we warn for the public about tornado threat is really we're forecasting supercells and the potential that we believe will is associated with those supercells actually then going on to produce tornadoes. For that, forecasters look to two elements. One is instability, which is the propensity of air to rise and accelerate upwards very rapidly. That makes every thunderstorm. The second ingredient though is called wind shear, which is the change of wind, both direction and speed with height. So wind low levels coming one direction, and above that wind coming from another direction. In this manner, air rising in a column will twist and start to, to gain some rotation. And if these processes feed back in the thunderstorm, you can sustain rotation, intensify it, and ultimately that circulation, what we call a mesocyclone, will then go on to produce the most significant tornadoes. And this is the kind of thing that's been occurring with great frequency the springtime uh, of uh, the uh, eastern and central U.S. But what gives these supercells and ultimately these tornadoes their power? Simon blames it on the cap. The cap, also known as the lid, is a layer of relatively warm dry air thousands of feet above the ground that suppresses or delays the development of thunderstorms. Like a lid placed over a boiling pot, air below it will continue to warm and moisten while air above it may cool increasing the amount of potential instability. Firstly, it allows the energy to keep developing during the course of a day without being liberated too early. If, if thunderstorms form at 11 o'clock in the morning before the heat of the day really occurs, they're not likely to be that strong. So this delays thunderstorm development, allows the energy to build up. Then once the thunderstorms develop, it, it, it causes them to develop extremely rapidly, what we call explosive development and that will maximize the strength of the updrafts, maximize their potential to go on and produce things like tornadoes. Oh, it's a terrible house. Priming the atmosphere for these severe storm events are intense interactions between cool dry air and warm moist air. Eric Holthouse, a meteorologist and a climate researcher for the Lamont Doherty Earth Institute, says when these air masses collide, they form fronts, which can trigger supercell thunderstorms. That's why tornado season is in the spring. Uh, you get cold air coming down from Canada and warm air from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, when you add a jet stream in there that's strong, then um, the entire thunderstorm can start to rotate. If that rotation is strong enough, then a tornado can form. Still, Simon says only 20% of storms that rotate produce tornadoes. While meteorologists are able to determine the conditions that will develop into a supercell, predicting when a supercell will actually spawn a tornado is very difficult. Going from a supercell thunderstorm that's rotating to actually getting this very concentrated vortex at a much tighter scale uh, is something that's been quite elusive. For example, uh, on weather radars, you can have two identical looking supercells on their appearance on radar. One goes on to produce a major tornado and the other one doesn't. We can't really discern what is so different about the two. So there is still this uh, missing link that we haven't uh, really been able to nail down yet. What scientists do know is that the greater the difference between the warm and cold air, the stronger the storm system and the potential for tornadoes. One factor that could be fueling the spring's twisters is the weather pattern La Nina. Uh, La Nina is um, kind of the opposite of El Nino, but not quite. There's uh, abnormal cooling of the Pacific Ocean and that causes the jet stream to change worldwide. 
So we're seeing the jet stream move a little bit north this year, which adds a little bit more fuel to the mix. This shift in the jet stream allows for more warm, moist air from the Gulf to interact with the cool, dry air fueling the mix. That could be just by chance. That could be because we've had only five or six La Ninas since this connection has been made. So we're still, as scientists, we're still searching for that connection. Um, and this season is going to motivate, I think, a lot of research on the topic. The unusual tornado season has also prompted some scientists to question whether there's a link to climate change. Many anticipate more extreme weather events will be an outcome of global warming. So you get uh, more energy in the system if you add more heat to the system, just like if you're cooking a pot of soup or something. If you add too much heat, it's going to boil over. So there's a lot of extra energy that's being added into the system right now. Uh, so you expect that energy to be released somehow, either through thunderstorms or hurricanes or, or other extreme events. Still, both scientists say it's too early to tell whether a link exists. For now, I think we're still looking at the realm of the variability of tornado frequencies. Um, and we, there's also an element of very, very bad luck here, because major urban areas are being hit by very, very intense tornadoes. That could happen in any year, but generally doesn't tend to happen. But at some point, those uh, statistics and, uh, catch up to you. Mike pulls out a little bit. I will show you Home Depot, which was completely devastated. For the Wall Street Journal, this is Christina Sui.